because we've got a quorum yes. on the dais, so we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, first order of business, call to order this uh, meeting of the City Apache Junction Public Arts Commission at 5.30 on Monday, September 12th. Um, we'll go ahead and do the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> Next up, we'll have the roll call. Chairman Buys. Present. Commissioner Ham. Present. Commissioner Klett. Here. Vice Chair Nicholas. Here. Commissioner Danford and Commissioner uh, Sperna uh, did let us know that they will not be able to make it this evening, Mr. Chairman, so, but we do have a quorum. Fantastic, fantastic. Just in the nick of time. Um, <laughs> All right, so next item up is the consent agenda for the consideration of approval of the agenda. And do we need to do these one at a time or can we do them both at the same time? You can do it at the same time. Same time. And then uh, if everyone's okay with it, we'll do them both at the same time. Consideration of the approval of the minutes of the May 9th uh, regular meeting. So last time we met in May, a little while. Back from the summer <laughs> recess. Uh, do I have a motion uh, for approval of the consent agenda? I move that the Public Art Commission accept the agenda as presented and approve the minutes from the May 9, 2022 regular meeting. I second it. Thank you. Commissioner Ham. Yes. Commissioner Klett. Yes. Vice Chair Nichols. Nichols. Yes. Chairman Baez. Yes. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Very much. Uh, next on the agenda is the announcement of artwork. I don't think anyone sent anything in this meeting. Um, so we'll go ahead and keep moving to the uh, public hearings. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just very briefly, I'd like to introduce uh, the item. This is uh, the Public Art Commission's first recommendation to the City Council on our first uh, public art piece or pieces, if you wanna uh, look at it that way. Uh, this is for the uh, Dutchman Dog Park. Um, at our last meeting, I believe we uh, decided um, on, the, on the artist for the dog park. Uh, the artist has produced uh, some um, conceptual pieces for us to look at. And uh, Dan, Diane will do a presentation for us, but my understanding is uh, we would be choosing one of the, of the large pieces. There are two submitted, the Great Dane and the Husky with the Pup. Those are considered the, the large pieces. And then the, the smaller piece is the Bulldog. Uh, my understanding is the budget allows for one large piece and, and the smaller piece, uh, and also the choice of colors. Uh, so with that, Mr. Chairman, uh, we also provided a recommended motion for you. So when you're ready to make your, your decisions, um, we will forward your recommendation, of course, to the City Council uh, for their final, final approval. And with that, Diane. Thank you, Diane. and good evening, Commission members. <laughs> Very excited to bring to you the concepts, which I think you've been, um, been apprised of ahead of time. I also want to introduce Trevor O'Toole. Trevor, come on up. Here he is. Good evening, Trevor. The <laughs> man, the creator. Trevor's not excited about this. <laughs> there he is. Yeah. Welcome, so welcome. We're going to give the presentation, and then Trevor's here to answer any questions you might have about the fabrication, um, about the colors. Um, after the presentation, which will show you all the different um, concepts that he's produced, you're going to be making a couple of decisions. Um, so the first is, let's see. Yeah. Have you always been going to these? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Yeah. For the record, I had you fill one of these to need them. Okay, here's some extras up here if anybody needs them. Aren't we just filling these out? So ultimately what you've seen is a selection of two large-scale sculptures. There's the Great Dane, and you'll see that all in the presentation in a couple of different colors. 
And then there's also a husky and pup, which is considered one sculpture. You know, it's really two sculptures for vegetarian purposes, it's considered one sculpture. And then another option is for a smaller sculpture, which is a bulldog. So you're gonna be deciding, number one, if you wanna move forward with a bulldog, and then you'll choose a color, there are two different colors, and then you'll decide on which of the two large scale sculptures, which is either the Great Dane or the Husky and the Pup. So without further ado, okay, so you all remember the selection process which took place back in April. Um, Trevor was selected unanimously as the first choice and since signing the contract, he's been very busy working on these different concepts. And he's also come up to the site. So he got a great idea of what the dog park location looked like and what would be a good <clears throat> space for the two different sculptures. So just to refresh your memory, um, the entry plaza, you can see right about here. And there's a good visual and kind of hiding on the left is one of the bulldogs to the left, but we'll talk more about him in a minute. So this is the, the location at the park entrance that we're considering for the large scale sculpture. And then we move on into the different um, iterations of the dogs. The first is the Great Dane, which is presented here in a rose color. And notice that he has a little bit of space next to him for people to sit down next to him or kids will probably want to just stand up on there. <laughs> um, all the sculptures are gonna have a four inch concrete pad below them. And that helps for a lot of different ways. It means that no one's gonna accidentally walk into a tail. Um, it means you know somebody who is sight impaired is, is gonna know that there's something there. Um, and it also, you know, considering whatever happens in terms of greenery in this area over the years, it will also kind of rise it up above any type of irrigation system. And then there's the second iteration of the Great Dane. And this shows you how big he is at six foot. So again, the Husky and the Pup is six feet tall, will also be on a pad. <clears throat> if you're concerned about people jumping on the tail of like the Pup, it's gonna have a very strong armature. It's gonna be able to withstand people stepping on it. Um, and then there's also gonna be metal facets. Uh, could you talk a little bit about that, Trevor? How you're, how you're gonna construct it? Oh, yeah. so, you... <laughs> uh, <laughs> so the piece will be faceted um, based on the picture. Um, each of the pieces will be cut out individually and each of the seams will be welded and grounded flush, so it gives a seamless appearance. Um, the welds are pretty strong. It should be stronger than the metal, technically, but, yeah. <laughs> is the painted finish, is it gonna be kind of a matte or a gloss? Or? Um, that's to, de to be determined. Um, so we can do it matte, we can do it gloss, kind of wherever, yeah. Is it like in an <laughs> enamel paint? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And so inside the tail, Rather than just having an outer frame, you have an inner armature of those pixels, kind of like a geodesic dome kind of thing? It'll be like, like think of the tail as the skin, and then we'll have a bone that's going in that oh, will well, like tag into it. and underneath. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that this can withstand. I mean, public art means it's going to be out in the public. It's going to get well-loved. Uh, so we wanted something that's easy to maintain and is very durable and you know we'll talk about paint at a later date to make sure it's not something that's going to chalk up or get too you know too uh, faded at any point so paint's going to be a huge consideration because you don't want to have to go back every two or three years and repaint this. Mm -hmm. right. You don't want chalky paint getting on people's clothes and all that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. Yeah. Okay so this is an alternate view of the Husky and you can see kind of peeking out in the back is a brown version of the Bulldog. <laughs> so we're looking at a Bulldog either on the, the left or to the right. And yes, he is lifting his leg, just for the record. <laughs> okay, there's another color iteration for the, the Husky and the Pup. We're not gonna have any neon colors. They may be a little bit bright in some cases, but there's not gonna be any like day glow. 
And this just gives you scale as to how, you know, the human scale, both adult and child, and how it will be next to the, the sculpture. It's hard, it's hard to get a sense of scale where this is six feet. Okay, another version of the colors. And then the bulldog's gonna be three foot tall, and I'm sure people are gonna try and jump on the back. That's just gonna be normal. So this is a version that shows you the scale with a human, and this is a kind of an earthy green color. And you can see him way off on the left, near the Ramada. And you can see the brown version over to the right. And then there's just another closer up view of the bulldog in the, the green color on the right. This gives you a scale. Now per city code, anything over six feet tall will need to go through permitting with you know, builders, uh, special inspections, uh, permits, and so forth. But based on conversations with the city's engineering department, uh, if you have a sculpture six feet or under, you don't have to do that. At a later date, will we, will we have more detail on the attachment, the foundation attachment? I'm just, yeah. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Typically, if, if, uh, if it's all red and epoxied in, into place. Okay, post installed into the pad. Yeah. And then, quick question, the six foot limit, uh, does that include the base that it's gonna be out to uh, Adrian with the city, and I haven't gotten a response yet, but I believe we're talking about just the sculpture That's at correct. six foot. Yes. So this, the four foot, the four inch platform shouldn't make any difference. It shouldn't make it force into going through the engineering drawings in that stage. Good question. Correct. <clears throat> okay. So this is the last slide. And at this point, um, I'd like to see some discussion, and Liz, please feel free to, to chime in. I'd like to see some discussion that you might have uh, in terms of first the bulldog. Uh, does anybody have any reservations for the bulldog? Um, I, I, I have to say I'm prejudiced because I own a bulldog. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so I absolutely love it. I think it's hysterical. I, I, I think that's a really nice addition. I, I like it. It's fun. I think people will get a good laugh out of it. I just, I just like it. Just for clarity, can you go over again? So the options of bulldog versus Dane versus husky with pup. Does, if you say yes on the bulldog according to this decision tree, uh, does it preclude either the Great Dane or the husky with pup? The, the bulldog is a separate vote. It's basically yes or no on the bulldog. Okay. And then it's yes or no for the, either the Great Dane or, or for the husky. Okay. So ultimately you will end up with the bulldog plus one of the larger sculptures. Okay. Just want to make sure that the bulldog wasn't in lieu of the pup or something. And no. <laughs> no, it, it, fortunately Trevor had the budget to do both of those, which is great. Great. And I, I think they're both going to be popular. Whichever the large scale one is selected plus the bulldog I think will be popular. I like that you can climb on the bulldog because kids like to do that and you know people might sit on it and take a picture with it. Yeah. You know, I think that's neat that it's interactive. And then I like the scale of the other ones when you see them in you know in the park or next to a human it makes them a lot more dynamic than if they were like 3 feet. So that makes that decision between those two a little harder. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. What's the determining factor on the location of the bulldog? I know they were shown in kind of in different parts of the renderings. And uh, is that an ultimate decision by Parks and Rec or selection from the artist? Liz? Okay. Oh, Liz. Liz Lingenbach, Parks and Recreation Director. Um, really, those are just two options that, uh, as we were out there, either of those work. So. You know, if you have some input on that, we're happy to take that feedback. If you think one works better than the other, otherwise we'll kind of just decide um, where it makes the most sense. Okay. Well, I do have a little bit of input on that. Just because of the fact that we should acknowledge that kids are going to climb on this, I very highly suggest a spot with lots of shade. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a good idea. That's a good idea that you might sit on it. And yeah, so it doesn't get too hot. There, there is a tree 
very close by. I, you can I, will, see. I actually really liked this yeah. rendering right here mm -hmm. with it in that spot because again, lots of shade. It's mm -hmm. gonna be an easier place for people to touch it. And He's the dinner leg on the pole. <laughs> right, that's Ooh. right. Too bad it's not a fire hydrant there. <laughs> Yeah, if it was shaded, then it wouldn't be hot to the touch. Right. As hot to the touch. Yeah, right. To the touch. That's, that's a great public art deterrent. No, seriously. <laughs> um, <laughs> we, yeah. <laughs> um, but no, I, it is going to have shade. If it is put in that entral, entrance area, there is going to be some shade from the trees. It may be a little bit higher in maintenance because you're going to have to kind of blow the debris off of the sculpture that mm -hmm. does have faceted's, Bird faceted's poop. but I, I don't think that's going to be a huge problem. I, I'd rather have a little bit of extra maintenance than ha one day here that so we had to have a host an ambulance come out because somebody's suffered a burn from touching it. I, I think it's a, it's a really tricky issue putting any kind of metal sculpture in a public place. You've got the love sculpture for city of uh, Scottsdale, which is metal. Um, I mean, if you think we need to have signage nearby that the metal may be hot, I'm, I'm just not sure. I, I think that the sculpture is gonna be metal and I think that we can try and shade it as much as we can. It's gonna have a four inch platform so people are gonna have to get up on that platform to, to get closer to it, to touch it. Um, but it's it's a sculpture in a public place, and there are, there are a lot of metal sculptures in Arizona. Yeah. So, you know, I'm not sure how far to, to take that. I mean, it's a good question, but I'm just not sure how the city needs to address that problem. Up north, they don't say, don't stick your tongue on that sculpture <laughs> yeah. when it's cold. <laughs> so yeah. some of it has to be a little bit of common sense. That, I mean, that's a good point. You know, metal sculpture in Michigan, people are going to yeah. do that. So, so you got to watch. Yeah. yeah, you just got to be aware. That sounds good. So now what we vote. So, um, so it, it, does anyone have any discussion about their preference for the Great Dane or for the Husky? I, I like the Husky with the puppy. I just think, you know, while we, you know, we've got the bulldog who's kind of fun because he's lifting his leg, and then you know, the, the mother with the pup, again, I, I think, I don't know, I, I just think the Great Dane looks a little sedate. He's just sitting there. I, I think the other one's a lot more fun. Again, it's a dog park. We want it to be fun. I'd like to see him in bright colors, you know, so that people can get into the mood when they see them. Um, mm -hmm. Like I said, I, li I like the husky with the pup. People like the puppy. Yeah. The I like the majesty of the Great Dane. Mm -hmm. I think he looks very majestic and, you know, that kind of thing where you could put your arm around him and you know, <laughs> do that. So it's hard to choose. Yeah, my initial reaction with the Dane was that, you know, I liked the <clears throat> the aspect of kind of public engagement by having that plinth that you could stand on or sit on for a photo opportunity. But there's a good point about the tail that, you know, potentially that could be a, you know, I could see some, some, uh, some kid or someone sitting on the tail and arm around the little pup husky. Um, <laughs> another good reason, I guess, to have the armature <laughs> being able to support it, but... Uh, and then it also kind of invokes more of a family-friendly atmosphere, um, having the, the pup in the, mm -hmm. uh, as part of the statue as well. A little relationship between the two animals, mm -hmm. yeah. A little more kinetic. Mm -hmm. Kids are just going to immediately just go, aww. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, any other discussions about the breed? Any discussion you'd like uh, regarding the colors? I, I think we should go with the brightest colors that we've got there. I, I like the green bulldog, and I like the green and turquoise uh, pup pup with the husky too, just because, again, it's supposed to be fun. I, I don't want to see something that's going to fade into the background. I'd like to see something that really stands out when people approach the park. And when people are driving by, they'll, they'll stand out as well. Yeah, I'd kind of echo those sentiments. I think having that kind of pop art coloration mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. helps give a contrast from, you know, all kind of the natural, um, natural tones of the park. Question then, is the green, the earth green bulldog the same green as, no, it's not, the neon green and blue husky? One says so earth green. Is it different? Yeah. A different green. Okay. It, yeah, it's a little bit brighter. 
do that. Um, okay. Um, if, do you feel that you've discussed the, the issue enough that you're ready to vote? I believe so. Leave it to mm -hmm. the You'll comments. be filling this out. No. Um, okay. You know, the first is yes or no to the bulldog and your first color choice. And then you circle yes or no for the two large scale sculptures. And then you put down your first, second, and third choice in terms of colors. And then I'll collect these and tally them up. Uh, Mr. Chairman, a uh, question yes, clarification. Sir. The bulldog can or can be in the bright green? It's right now it is uh, earth green. An earth, earth green. 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 So it's a different green than the one that's shown with the wolf pup. Right, but can it be in the bright green? If the commission so chooses? How, if, sure. I mean, if, <laughs> I didn't want to open that can of worms. Yeah. My no, other no, question was no, could the husky puff fine. be red? If, if, if there's <laughs> a consensus you'd like the same an, color it, green, then I think each one concern. should be a different color. Um, yeah, I think they should be different colors too. But they should contrast. Any reservations? No reservations about the color. So if you guys want to change it or yeah <laughs> can I ask you guys are you thinking that you're all liking the um, neon green and blue husky but mm -hmm. that that green is too close to the bulldog green so you'd like to maybe see the bulldog in some other color is that what you guys are thinking I would say the three colors that stand out to me are the neon green the blue and the the rose seem to be the Kind of the, the brightest mm -hmm. um the earth green i mean to be honest i uh i tend to lose it in the background a little bit but that might just be me uh, so what if we choose that's the earth earth green okay what if we choose first whether we want the great dane or the husky pop then figure out which color combo of that and then we could complement the bulldog to go with do you want to do a show of hands for the yeah, set of probably say, do yeah, what if we did the bulldog in red, Let's the go. rose color? Uh, show of hands. Motion. Okay. Uh, we'll need a motion. Okay. Okay. So we'll throw we'll throw a wrench in your um <laughs> in your, <laughs> your, your whole thing here, Diane. But is there is there a motion for selection of the Great Dane versus the Husky and the Pup? I'll make that motion. I'll second that motion. So we're just gonna do a show of hands. We'll just do a roll call. Yeah. So roll the call. selection was for the Husky over the Great Dane? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, the choice between the two large sculptures. So an affirmative would be the Husky over the Great, the Great Dane. Dane. Or Husky, okay. Uh, Commissioner Ham. Aye. <laughs> Commissioner Klett. Yes. Vice Chair Nicholas. Yes. Chairman Buys. Yes. So the preference of the commission is the Husky and Pup. Correct. Okay. Okay. Now colors. Do we? Do you yeah, all yeah. want to vote on the sheet for the colors? Is there a consensus to make a motion on the colors? Let's have a bit of discussion. I think first, again, just to circle back to it. So what I'm curious about is. It seems to me there's a consensus. If we can pick the three colors, I think, mm -hmm. and then determine their application. Oh, I'm sorry, I have to interrupt. Another vote on the um, the dog lifting its leg. Mm -hmm. what? Oh, we have to the bulldog. Oh, yes. Okay, we can go back. Sure. To yeah, the we can. Uh, Before you get to colors, you probably okay. should yeah. vote on that. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Is there a mo is there a motion for a decision yeah. on incorporating the bulldog? I move that the Public Art Commission recommend the Bulldog into the recommendation. I'll second that motion. Okay, come on. Commissioner Ham. Uh, Commissioner Ham. Aye. Commissioner Klett. Yes. Vice Chair Nicholas. Yes. Chairman Buys. Yes. So the commission recommends in favor of the bulldog. Favor in favor of the bulldog. <laughs> 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 uh, 
but great. Okay, so okay. so basically there are a couple of areas that are left. There's the area of choosing the colors for the, the husky and the pup, and then there's the choosing the color for uh, the bulldog, and the artist has, has consented that if the, the commission chooses to have a lighter color green for the bulldog, that that's certainly doable. So of the color choices, um, kind of going through, because I don't want to open the can of wor worms of picking something that's not listed here, right. and we want to keep it constrained yeah. to the, <laughs> the colors here. Yeah. We could go on for, for days. Right. Um, we have earth green, brown, beige, sky blue, neon green, uh, blue, turquoise, and terracotta. Uh, Is this for the bulldog? Or just the color? I think just the, the general color selection. So I think if we can okay. narrow down to three color selections and then apply them, if that's feasible, it seems like it's kind of uh, customizable for the colors to go on on any of the three selected, right? So I correct me if I'm wrong or if that's, uh, that's a challenge there, Trevor. I have so, a simplified suggestion. What if we pick from the colors that are available of the Husky Pups, out of these three, let's pick that, which we like with combo. Then all we have to change is the color of the Bulldog if we decide to pick one of these other colors for the Bulldog. So do you want to leave the, the, the Husky and the Pup in the neon green and blue as it's shown here? Are you thinking you'd want to leave it in those colors? We would have to, as a board, we'd have to decide whether we want it in the beige and sky blue the neon green and blue, or the terracotta and turquoise. From what I'm getting off all you guys, it seems like y'all want the neon green and blue. But we would want to vote on that, right? Right, right. So let's yeah. vote on what color I combo mean if, of the husk, or the, or we can just say, ask the question, does everybody we, want the green and neon, neon green, green and blue? Right. Yeah, if everyone's... Yeah, uh, yeah. Motion. You okay? Clarification, green and blue for the husky yeah. and pup? Um, yeah. Yeah, just uh, as it's shown here on the on the form yeah. that we have. Okay. The neon and blue. The I could just make one quick comment, yeah. Chairman Vice. Um, Go ahead, Liz. We're, I am personally good with whatever, any of that's been presented. I would just say that as you guys discuss and decide, so I don't, any of those are fine with me. Maybe just as you discuss it, if as you're discussing, if... Um, we could have our artists would, could certainly weigh in if you felt that there was going to be some kind of clash or maybe something that wasn't going to stand out. Does that sound okay? Because yeah, I know absolutely. everybody keeps yeah. looking back at me, but I'm good with how your whole <laughs> conversation is going. So uh, it all sounds good. I, I agree with Liz. Um, I think the artist has chosen these colors to complement one another. Right. So mm -hmm. I think if we're diverging from those three specific choices, we need to confer with Trevor. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. right. What do you think, Trevor? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you did this smile. Put him on the spot. You have a great smile. Uh, he does. What was, what's the question? <laughs> so I guess to reframe it or to start, do you want to give us some context in terms of your color selection and how you selected the options? You know, they complement each other. Are we just talking about the bulldog or? No, let's talk. Let's start with the with the husky and the pup. Um, so I did the neon colors because they would pop. And the other two were kind of to bring that neon, like, so it's not so in your face. Kind of anchor it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, in contrast. Yeah, I can totally see that. Yeah, I think that's nice about it. And in terms of the bulldog, was there any, was there any specific uh, driver for your color selections? No. <laughs> so, Good yeah. answer. If we're, going, if we're going with his theory, if we, now we've all said that we like the neon and the green, the neon green and the blue husky and pup. Right. So if we go with what he's saying, then if we're going to pick those bright colors, then for the bulldog, we would want some, one of the more earth tones to ground it. So you would want to pick either the rose, maybe the brown, or maybe the terracotta. The only Does anybody like the beige? No, no Trevor. My my only concern with but going with the think? red, it might blend in with the gravel. That's the only. Oh, yeah. Really? So mm. How no. how different is the is the earth green that you have indicated here for the bulldog? How different is it from the neon green that's on the pup? 
I think that might be what's holding us up. Is that we just because it looks like we have two greens here. Yeah, I think that's what's holding us up. There you've got the, the earthier green color. Right, I think that one looks like the brighter green. So there, there's a difference in the green. One is just much brighter. OK. They're both pretty bright. They're both green. It could, it, it, it could be the neon green if chosen, if you guys want. If, oh, we want, OK. Should we simplify this by getting rid of some variables here? <laughs> by, <laughs> is, there a, uh, is there a consensus on kind of the option two for the neon green and blue of the Husky? I, yeah. I agree, yeah. So let's start, is there a motion then for recommendation um, for neon green and blue selection of the Husky and Pup as shown on option two? I make a motion that we recommend the neon green and blue for the Husky and Pup sculpture. I'll second that motion. <clears throat> Commissioner, B uh, Chairman Baez. Yes. Vice Chair Nicholas. Yes. Commissioner Klett. Yes. Commissioner Ham. Aye. So we have four votes in favor of the green and the blue for the Husky and Pup. So we just need a color for the Bulldog, and I think we're done. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting close. We're getting, getting there. Close. And it was laid out so nicely and so simply for us to go down it, but we're humans, and we have to complicate these things. We right? really do want discussion. So. <laughs> yeah. No, that's good. We, I think we worked that out in a good way. So now we have to just decide from the brown and the green. We're not going to pick. We're not going to go from the other colors. Is that what we decided? I, I would leave that up. If there's and any other thoughts on if the rose or the terracotta Do you or recommend shade of blue. Another color? What, if we weren't going to pick the green or the brown, what other color would you recommend? You said not the red because it wouldn't. Okay. I would just be with, worried about the red, it, like I said, blending in with the gravel. Because mm -hmm. um, it'll be sitting in the gravel and under the shade of yeah, the trees. right. And it might not show up, so. Um, the green, I, I think I chose the green because of the grass right next door. Um, kind of, you know, the brown. I don't know why I chose the brown, to be completely honest. <laughs> nice <laughs> earthy tone. Yeah. Yeah, you wanted to um, box that. I, like, I wanted the, the Huskies to be the main focus and the Bulldog to be kind of like the hidden gem on the park. So if you're mm -hmm. the Huskies and then you're walking out, you're like, oh, there's a Bulldog. Oh, and there's that yeah. too. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I didn't want it to be so in your face. Then I think I've figured out what my choice is of the two. Me too. Guys do. Yeah, okay. the earth green. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I think that, I think once we see it, I think that he, probably has a better idea of the color. I think that we're getting caught up in it being two green animals and us wanting it to be each animal is a distinctly different color. Mm -hmm. But I trust that in his vision that those two greens are enough. Um, there's enough difference in those two greens that they'll hold up in that environment because he's been out there and walking around in the environment. And that's how I came to that. How do you, how do you guys? I agree. I, I think yeah. I think it's good. Yeah. Before we uh, before we bring a motion, can we? Is there a slide of the um, of the rose Dane that we can look at? I just want to see how bright that is relative to this. I mean, are these colors pretty true on these photographs that we're looking at? These mock-ups that we're looking at? Yeah. No, they they're not. not. Yeah. So it, it'll change a little bit, but. This is just to kind of give you an example. As close that you can yeah. get. To and then paint, I'll have to as go. As opposed to bringing a paint chip or yeah. something. Yeah, when I go to paint, I'll have to talk to them and kind of color match it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's always a problem trying to, trying to get colors to show correctly on a digital screen. It mm -hmm. always varies. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Plus, once he gets there and figures out what kind of paint he needs to live long and whatever, and what his choices might be within that rose thing, might vary a little bit, yeah. right? Like what fits in with your budget and so forth. I got it. All um, right. So do you think, what do you think? I say we go with the green, with the, the earth green that's on there. The terracotta is a little darker. Do we have a, ter a picture of what the terracotta would look like up in here? 
so that yeah, so that's that a little more different. earthy. Rose is a little more. Yeah, yeah I think that really is going to fade into the I into the stones, and and so is the um, the rose. The yeah, and, and the brown. Forget the brown. There's enough terracotta and beige and <laughs> putty color around in all the houses. We want some pop of color. Mm -hmm. That's not all right. bad. <laughs> you know what well, is there a, is there a motion then? for recommendation for earth green for the bulldog. I motion that we accept the earth green as the color for the bulldog. I second the motion. <clears throat> Commissioner Klett. Yes. Commissioner Ham. Yes. <clears throat> Vice Chair Nicholas. Yes. Chairman Buys. Yes. So moved, Mr. Chairman, we've You've made your recommendation. You want us to sign these? Congratulations. <laughs> so in, in terms of, um, I believe this goes to council in October. Is that yes. correct? Yes. OK, so your recommendations will go to council. And at that point, then um, the artists will start working on the fabrication part of this, at, you know, buying materials and that sort of thing. Um, does anybody have any questions? It'll take possibly five months to completely fabricate it and have it ready for installation, which will be great. It won't be during the summer. <laughs> uh, just a simple question of, can we get a reminder of when the city council meeting for this recommendation will take place? Yes, absolutely. The 17th? Is that the 17th already, or is it the uh, The third? second meeting in October? The second meeting is the, it'd be the 18th. 18th, okay. Unless you want to do a work session first, which you probably should. Um, I'll have to ask Brian about yeah. that, but I, but could be the 17th then, or yeah, the, in yeah. the 18th, I could decide. Yeah, I think we can do back to back nights. Pardon? Yeah, we could do that. A work session on the third. Yeah. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah. And then a decision okay. on the 18th. Yes. Hey. Uh, they did accept our uh, colors for the Apache Junction Arts logo, so they. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So maybe um, we've got some sand in there. Okay. Yeah, and so one other, sorry, one other question quickly for for Liz, I suppose. Um, when these are going to be installed, uh, will there be any sort of, you know, notification sent out to the public? Absolutely. So we. Especially since this is, I think, in any public art installation, we will have a dedication and a small event. But this will be your first real one, so it, we definitely want to make a lot of fanfare out of it. So as we get closer to it getting selected, and then once we know the installation date, sometimes it's a little tricky, mm -hmm. you know, just timing it just right, yeah. but we will for sure be having some type of dedication um, in conjunction with the Art Commission. Fantastic. Turn that over to you, Rudy, for the next agenda item. Um, <coughs> Thank you so much, Diane. We don't have any uh, items to report this this evening, Mr. Chairman, uh, either under information reports or director's report. We do have a recommended motion for your next meeting. And of course, if there's uh, no items, we will uh, send notice of cancellation. So uh, I was going to stop at the call for future agenda items and see if there's any agenda items that um, that we wanted to discuss at the next meeting in October. Um, we talked about voting um, when our our time is up on the board, and to, to to put that on to figure out when when are we supposed to do our next votes and when are people's times. Joel, that might be something you can answer. Do you know when our terms are renewed? Yeah. Uh, I don't have that with me now. However, I know for the um, uh, the talent bank application process to fill some of the vacancies, it's listed in there. But we can get you a copy of uh, your terms. Actually, I do have. Oh, you have uh, those, Rudy? You have that? Yeah, I, I've got the. Uh, uh, Commissioner buys term expires 1031-23, and co 1031-22. Jeff Danford 1031-22, Jared Ham 1031-23, Gretchen Klett 1031-23, Liz Nicholas 1031-23, uh, 
And Frank Sperna, 103122. So Mr. Danford and Mr. Sperna and, and Ms. Coe, um, their terms come, come up at the end of October and they can either ask to be reappointed uh, or the council can uh, select uh, new commissioners. Okay, and I know traditionally that process happened in October. Um, it does. Like you said, uh, yeah. so I guess we could maybe, we would then have the new members and then we would end up doing the uh, votes for positions on the commission again for uh, Yeah, that'd probably be in December. December, okay. okay. Or November, yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. So at their meeting on the October 18th, they'll probably that's probably the night that they will select new commissioners. Uh, no, I, the, the terms go through the end of October. Oh, and so end November. October. Yeah. So then the new membership would start in November. Okay. Yeah. We get a letter or anything, or how does that get addressed? We get a letter from the city. I think it would be similar to what the count, or at least when it was a. Uh, when it was founded, it was uh, notified at the council meeting, I think. Right, there's a meeting where they, they decide that. Absolutely, okay. All right, um, so it sounds like there's nothing for the future agenda items in, in regards to terms or Jeanette, uh, I'm sorry, Diane and I will uh, get together and uh, we've talked about the work plan, updating the work plan or, or, or taking a good look at the, at the work plan possibly uh, discussion of of the next art piece um, and uh, so those will probably be the next items on your agenda okay yeah that was going to be my recommendation next was if there was a review of the work plan just um, now that we're kind of getting the ball rolling on the dog park so you I know we had identified kind of a order of operations during a work session I believe in 2020 or 20 late 2021 um, so yeah, if we can add those to the, have that for the agenda for October or at the recommendation when at the okay. next meeting. All right, any other future agenda items? Okay, uh, with that, I guess we'll move to selection of meeting dates, time, location, and purpose. Um, is there a motion for, well, I guess I'll open up for discussion first, 5.30, October 10th. Okay with everybody? Yeah. Do we have a motion? I move that the Public Art Commission hold a regular meeting on October 10th, 2022 at 5.30 p.m. in the City Council Chambers located at 300 East Superstition Boulevard. I'll second that motion. <clears throat> Commissioner Klett. Yes. Vice Chair Nicholas. Yes. Chairman Buys. Yes. Commissioner Ham. Aye. So moved, Mr. Chairman. All right. Diane, do you want With these? that, I will go mm -hmm. ahead and adjourn uh, this meeting of the City of Apache Junction Public Arts Commission. It is 6-19 on uh, September 12th. Thank you very much.